the challenges, creating mobility, but human beings are finding ways. So we, because of we cannot travel by plane, we made it possible that we can meet each other through these <laughs> gadgets now. <laughs> yes. Uh, let me see the time. We have two minutes, and uh, I think most of the students are joining now. Uh, uh, well, and briefly about this course, because I'm not going to speak too much after I introduce Anthony. This, uh, this, uh, our students are in the program Master Masters of Science in Educational Leadership. So we hope that they they will become agents of change. They bring changes in education system. So they, they are the master students from different parts of uh, Kazakhstan. We are trying to bring some international students. Maybe some, some students in the future will, from Kenya will join us. But, but I think this is a very vibrant new university. And I'm very proud. We, we have also, only, we have one minute maybe. Just let me get opportunity to introduce uh, you to Lynn Parmentek, who actually brought me to Kazakhstan. Lynn, say a couple of words before we start. Hello. Excellent guests from, from Kenya. All of them are finalists of the award, Teacher Global Award. Hello. Um, it's it's really nice to see you, and it's a real privilege to be able to listen. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. El, and I think I think uh, uh, I know I know you you have also very limited time, dear guests. Well, and Anthony said you will be with us for thirty minutes, but. If any of the students will have questions, I don't know if your time allows you to if to respond, but let's see how it goes. Okay. But we are not very uh, fixed from our side the time because we have one and 30 minutes. Even after your, your, you think that you, your time is over, we can still continue, but stay with us as long as you can, please. Well, with this, let me close the door. Okay, well, I see our students are here and our speakers, more importantly, are here. And uh, Dilara is helping with the technology. Dilara is recording and Gulmira is here. So we can start. What I will do is that I am very happy. I, have, I heard about this teach Global Teacher Prize about maybe four years ago, and I was talk, including it into my syllabus professional identity course. And I was talking it, about it as much as I knew. But today I am even more happier because the people who actually participated in this award and they were the finalists, they can share their own experiences. And uh, of course, uh, this is a great opportunity. And I thank uh, my former student, Anthony, or we also call him Gioco. But Anthony will introduce himself very briefly, but he also will in int introduce us to us two distinguished guests. And, and all of them are from Kenya. And we have, uh, if you have questions, why Kenyan teachers are actively participating, what's the secret behind, we can ask the questions later on. But in the meantime, before we, I give the floor to Anthony, to give the, our students and our guests some idea about what is this teacher, global teacher prize, why do we care about it? I would like us to, to watch some three or four minutes of the video, just uh, the clip from the, from the competition of the last year. And I request uh, Dilara to play this video. Yeah. Uh, maybe Anthony, maybe you close the screen so that the uh, the Delara could play the video. Yeah, I've closed my, I've stopped my share. I've stopped my share. Mm -hmm. Yes, Delara, we cannot hear you. Now, yeah. yeah. Melissa. You teach music, which is obviously deep in my heart. Yeah. Music is everybody's joy, whether you're talented or not. And so that's the approach. You're going to make me cry. Stop. But you make sure that any kid comes to you and says, I want to be in the band. Yes, they're in the band. If they, if they haven't been to one practice and the uh, concert is on that night, you say, you're in the band, no problem. When you arrived at the school, there was not one musical instrument. You now, even despite the school being broken into all those years ago and every instrument being stolen, you have raised over $200,000 to make sure that every kid for the future of that school will be able to play an instrument. Peter, Peter, I love your story, Peter, from Kenya, was working at a private school, 
and decided to leave that private school to give his talents to children who were not getting the same level of education that it, that we're getting at the private school. This particular area he worked in had suffered under very severe conflict in 2007. It was very violent. Many of those kids were traumatized, families were traumatized. You started a peace club. I knew I was gonna outrun the music. Sorry, guys. Like, it's Melissa's fault, it's not my fault, I'm sorry. Yeah, let's just play it again, that's okay, sorry. You started a peace club. You also teach the adults if they want to learn anything about agriculture, whatever it is. You started a science club. And the kids who worked with you with hardly any materials went on to win the major prize in Africa for the best science prize. That was because of you, Peter. Not only that, not only that, Peter donates 80% of his salary back to the community. Not only that, Peter shared with me last night that up until yesterday, he'd never been on a plane in his life. And you've arrived in a country that feels like you're in heaven on another planet. Okay, one more short clip. Sorry, sorry. Maybe, maybe, Delara, do you want to show the, uh, the second one in the same video? How Peter was get, getting the award, that, that moment. The second clip, please. Yes, I think, yeah. This is an Oscar or uh, Nobel Prize or Oscar <laughs> Prize for teachers. Sure, sure. Some journalists call it. Yes. You saw him let me try to do it then. I think uh, it, it's taking time. Maybe if there is a problem with connection, maybe we'll just give the floor to our guests. Uh, I can show that short video if you want. Yeah, the second second, second part, when when he was be, give, being given the award. This one, yeah, I guess the yeah, show. This is over. Uh, yes, this is it now. We can move now. We can close it now. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, yep. Well, I hope that this gave you some idea about that this is a big deal. Teachers take it seriously and teachers participate from all over the world. And now I give the floor to Anthony and I will request Anthony to introduce the distinguished colleagues also and the, your, your stories. Anthony, I met he, Anthony a long time ago, I can't even remember the, the, the time, but Anthony came as a brilliant young scholar to study in Pakistan, and I was an instructor, and uh, what I was fascinated by Anthony is really deep critical thinking, analytic mind, and also a very creative approach, because I think Anthony is a science teacher, but in everything he did was really very innovative way of addressing the issues. And uh, since then, I had been in touch with Anthony. I am very privileged that I used 
to be a teacher of Anthony. Now the floor is to you, Anthony. Thank you very much, sir. It's proud to have your teacher speaking. You might not know, but uh, you are the one who inspired me even to continue doing my PhD immediately I finished the master's. So I remember a lesson you taught us about observation and it was very, very practical. I'll never forget that. And now when I train my students on writing the extended essay, I use the same technique you used for me. So thank you very much. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am here representing the global teachers from Kenya. And uh, I like to introduce, we are lucky, we have top 50 finalists, but we also have the top 10s and we also have the final winner. Unfortunately, the final winner, Peter, he's traveling, I called him. So he might call us, talk to us through phone, or he might send a recording, but he's with that in spirit. So with us in this team, we have our 2000, we had even 215, I couldn't get them. They are busy, but uh, Mike Wamaya, who from 2017 agreed to be here. Thank you, Mike, for your time. Then we have Abdi, who have been working closely, is also here, and myself. So we'll talk in the order of the years. Let us, our seniors start speaking because they have more experience. Actually, Mike was Peter's mentor. In that celebration, if you listen properly, you could hear our voices shouting, Kenya! <laughs> so we'll begin with Mike. He'll share his uh, presentation and his experience. Then we'll go to Abdi, then it will come to me. Over to you, Mike. <laughs> Well, really nice. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Maina. Maina is also a very um, inspiring person since I met him ever since. So I now finally get to understand where the connection is with all his expertise. So for me, as um, uh, I don't have much uh, because what I do is very straight. I'm a dance teacher and uh, I just want to uh, talk and uh, eventually I'll send you guys a small link for my work. So whenever you have time, you can uh, click and see what I do. So I don't know if you guys can hear me well. Yeah, you can. Very good, very good. Yeah, okay. Voila. Yeah, so uh, as uh, uh, Gyoko said, I'm uh, Mike Wamaya and uh, I'm a dance teacher. And uh, I was actually the first ever dance teacher to be nominated for the Global Teacher Prize. And uh, my experience was quite different and unique because I was not expecting uh, uh, a person like me who is a dance teacher in the slums of Nairobi because I teach in a place uh, called Kibera. Uh, and. Uh, I'll try and share a picture of Kibera, how it looks. And uh, Kibera is um, an informal settlement. And uh, we live here with over 700,000 people. And, and uh, within that, uh, lack of, um, there are so many challenges we face here. And uh, lack of uh, water, sanitation, housing is really a huge problem. And um, we've been struggling so much. And so it was really hard to see that uh, I would come out of this place and be amongst the world's top 10 best teachers, and not with science or math, but with uh, arts. And uh, my background briefly was I was, um, I never finished school, so I never studied because I was, uh, uh, I spent a lot of my life on the streets. So I never studied as a teacher, but <laughs> I forced myself to teach. And I always say I taught myself how to teach because of uh, the surrounding my society, my community. I was striving so hard to give children what I never got growing up. So I redesigned my way and my approach on how to communicate with children, on how to uh, communicate with also adults and how to also bring the community to buy into the idea of what I have. I was also privileged growing up to have a chance to travel to Europe to now do like proper dance studying. So I ended up doing dance in the Netherlands and uh, in the UK and uh, came back to Kenya in 2008 and I didn't like Europe completely. I, 
I, I had a job there. They offered me to work in Europe as a dancer, but I did not like it because uh, uh, I was taught dance for free. So I thought there was a very good reason as to why I studied dance everything for free. So I need to invest that back into my own community. So I started teaching and uh, dancing. Back then in Kenya, dance was still not accepted within the community. And uh, having male people dancing and uh, doing classical ballet was not something uh, taken seriously. I, so I, am I was able to trigger it and uh, to bring it to the next level in terms of getting uh, the community to fully understand dance, to fully understand the importance of dance and how dance can be used for social change and how dance can not, uh, my philosophy of not using dance for performances, but for community development, for social well-being, for mental health, for redesigning uh, the status of a specific community so that used to be my philosophy, and I've been teaching now for 10 years plus. And uh, so in 2007, uh, there are lots of articles that were done about my work uh, on CNN and uh, on uh, BBC. Uh, they did documentaries about me, and uh, uh, I was approached. I didn't know about the Global Teacher Prize, and I was approached and told if I would apply for this prize, it could propel my work. And uh, uh, I always thought the best thing to do was to scale what I was doing, to find ways of having it replicated around the world. And I thought the Global Teacher Prize was gonna be a perfect platform for me to show my work and for me to be able to be recognized. And by that, more teachers will now get out because my aim was to motivate more young people to look into teaching more young people to look into like community service because uh, I felt there is where we're going to have change. And uh, uh, by luck, I was uh, top 10, <laughs> and uh, which was also very scary to me seeing a very big stage. And uh, my favorite artist used to be Andrea Bocelli from Italy, uh, who sings very nice opera music. And on that evening, he was the one singing for me. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> This is so, so special. So you feel like you're in heaven, you know, and like just the way um, uh, Peter says, and everything being done. And I thought this was a perfect platform for me to now scale what I was doing, to share my vision and my philosophy, because I am not a full believer of um, standardized testing. I don't believe in it completely. And I don't think education should be mainly focused on that, but education should be like teaching the inner self of a human being to be able to trigger change within their own space. So I use that platform to uh, share my philosophy, my, I call it my weird way of work. <laughs> and um, I was so lucky that uh, I met lots and lots of people who also shared the same vision I met people who believed in education should be through play. I met people who believed on um, no standardized test to develop a, a well-beingness well of a human being. And so I felt energized and I felt a lot of power in me the first uh, two days that I was in Dubai. And we had the evening for the gala where um, uh, we had so many teachers from everywhere around the world. And I was also sitting on the platform there, uh, hoping to be the winner <laughs> of the Global Teacher Prize. And uh, unfortunately I didn't, but the experience of it, it really gave me a lot. It really changed my, my way of work completely. It also brought a lot of respect in my work because I uh, was from there, I had to now travel around and I was invited in the UK where I was able to meet um, the Duchess of Cambridge and, uh, uh, and the husband and where I was able to discuss with them challenges affecting children in sub-Sahara Africa. And I was able to use myself as an ambassador to represent my own country in different forums. 
then it reached a point that I also felt I was doing too much travel and uh, less work back at home. So uh, I, yes, I wanted to travel, but there was way a lot of, of traveling opportunities for me because everybody just wanted to hear what I have to say in regards to education. So I started calling a lot of them off and uh, I was like, on my bucket list, which country am I, uh, do I always want to go and I've never had a chance to travel to? So if you invite me from a country I want to go, I'll say yes. <laughs> and so I ended up traveling again. So I managed to visit India, which I always wanted to go and see if I can do something there. And uh, I was even able to travel to Ukraine. And uh, at that point, I was, uh, I, I was there, there was a lot of conflicts uh, between Ukraine and Russia. And I'm very grateful I was able to be there at that particular time to also influence teachers there because at that point, teachers who are working in public schools were leaving Ukraine and going to work in the Middle East where they wanted to work for private schools. And I was able to, uh, one of the teachers came to me and said, uh, your speech just made me realize that my country needs me more. And uh, I was like, that's the reason as to why I was nominated for this prize. So if I was able to influence that teacher not to look at pay as a solution, but to look at her work as a solution for her own country and uh, to look at herself as a soldier fighting for the rights of the children in her own country. So I was really grateful. And that also gave me another wide opening into my work. And so I've keep on working and now I'm uh, back in my school I've been still working and uh, uh, coronavirus also came and everything stopped, but we didn't stop. Uh, the children I teach uh, cannot have access to internet. The children I teach cannot even have access now to three meals a day. I am very grateful because of the status I got from the Global Teacher Prize. I'm now able to now call people and do online fundraisers and get support to my own children, get support to my students because food is really a huge crisis in um, Kibera right now where we live and work. And uh, I am very grateful with our school, which is an after school program, have been able to provide 500 plus uh, families with uh, at least one meal a day. And uh, we've maintained it ever since this Corona epidemic started. So. I would have not been able to do that if I was not recognized for the Global Teacher Prize. I, I, I felt I didn't have that voice. But now I have the voice to knock any door and ask for help and not to, uh, and, and, and also find help support my students. My students have gained lots of scholarships right now for the past two years. And uh, some are locally, some are internationally. And uh, of course, is because of my status, is because of uh, being nominated for the prize. And uh, we were able to also raise money because I also ran a menstrual hygiene program here for girls. I was able to raise money without writing proposals. I just said my mouth. <laughs> and because of the respect the world now has for me, I was able to get money and I'm now supporting 1,000 girls it now increased the number 1300 girls with menstrual products every month and so besides just sitting in dubai in fancy places and uh, having my name on tv and everywhere i was able to now trigger real change within my community and this is not just teaching this is now like social impact that this prize brought into me so I'm always very grateful and uh, I always urge as many people as possible to apply for it because I think it's not about the status of winning money or the million dollar prize, but uh, it's the recognition of your work, it's the recognition of your philosophy and also getting to meet global leaders and challenging them. I remember when I was nominated, I've never thought the president of this country can no, knows my name because I live <laughs> in a place that nobody wants to associate yourself with. But the president of this republic sent me a video 
encouraging me and all other teachers around the world. And I was so shocked when my name was being mentioned and my president sent a video that is being played. And I have that video, I show it to my students. And I use it as an example to prove to my students that look, um, the world has no limits. We define our solutions and we define the path that we are going to take. And uh, now the students, the parents, they have full support within my program because now they feel like I'm, I'm like a little star in my own community and we keep on shining every single day. So the Global Teacher Prize puts a lot of spotlight on teachers and through them, there's a lot that uh, one person can use to be able to propel him or her to the next level. Thank yeah. you very so much, that's Mike. Speech. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, <laughs> and, Mike. Uh, uh, I think that is very, very impressive. Very, very above yeah. expectations. <laughs> yeah, very yeah. impressive. Very impressive. Thank you, <laughs> Anthony. Before before we give the floor to another colleague, mm -hmm. maybe Mike, if you could show, send us the video clips that uh, we would love to watch the videos that especially dance. And by the way, among my colleagues who are attending, if you happen to visit Kazakhstan, we have some brilliant colleagues. Some of them are attending, and one of them is particularly doing arts-based education. You would love yes. to meet him and dance together. <laughs> and now, <laughs> and also, and our students, could you type your questions to the chat also? Because we may not have enough time, but we, I can always follow up with Anthony and other distinguished colleagues. We can ask questions, and they can respond to us. Well, let's go forward now. Thank you very much, Dushan. Thank you very much, Mike. That was impressive. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> now, Thank you. I'll, I'll pass Thank you. over to my colleague, Abdu. Abdi Kadir has a special connection to this. He has been telling me, apply, apply. I told him, no, 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 I don't need to apply. He's the one who made me apply. So Abdi, over to you. <laughs> you are muted, Abdi. You can share your screen. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Daksari. I think it is a, it's a real privilege to be with you all here for this session. And uh, I will share my screen so that I can explain as you look at some of the things that I have that I'll want to talk about. Because that, that will assist us in uh, discussing better. Okay. Allow me to share this screen. I hope my screen is clear. Mm -hmm. We can see it? Yes, yes. Yes. Great. So I will talk about myself. Mm -hmm. I am a school leader. So I, I think I, I will really interact with you because it's part of the things that you will be doing as uh, part of the students mm -hmm. who are doing leadership courses on education. There are some things that we learn in schools. There are some things that we learn on the field. So I'll give my story of how I jumped from that mm -hmm. small pond into the Global Teacher Prize. Mm -hmm. This is where I come from. Um, I come from a very small town. It's called Maralal. Maralal is in the northern part of Kenya. Uh, uh, quite remote. And the fact that uh, the Global Teacher Prize recognized me from such a distance was in itself a major indication that it is possible to be recognized wherever you are because of the work that you do. So we should not be doing work because we want to be recognized, but we should do work because it's the right thing to do. Once you do that, recognition will follow. So I'll give a, a brief story of how I ended up getting recognized. This is just part of the highways that we have. If it is a highway, it is a road. Um, this is part of the area where I was formed and I grew to become a teacher. This is where I started my school from. It's in these plains, completely dry, an area that had a lot of uh, cattle rustling, uh, fights within communities, uh, very harsh environmental conditions. And this happened to be my house when I was a teacher at the first time when I was employed as a teacher. And this was the best house I could get in that particular area where I worked. So the reason why I've decided to bring this tool is to encourage those who are on leadership to recognize that uh, it might start from a very small beginning. 
you don't necessarily have to have it from the word go like mike said uh, he comes from a very uh, a settlement area that is known to be i think the biggest in africa slum area yet he was recognized because of the good work that he does so even in this little desert that i was in i could still get recognition now when i started on leadership because i wanted to talk about leadership mainly when i started on leadership this is what i was given as an office of the principal i was told this is your office you're the school principal and this this was the school get so that just tells you the environment that you have already been taken to some of my colleagues were wondering why i should take up such a leadership post they are saying but and i told them that is what leadership is all about you don't go to establish things you start and then make your impact so i work in this school it's called mwangaza muslim i work with these students and currently i sit inside the classroom with them you can see you can see me here on this uh, i'm seated here mm -hmm. that happens to be my office it also happens to be a class because we have so many students who need to be taught so we just just stay together in the same uh, classroom give you a brief background that you must understand some of the things that we do i have 314 students 80% of them are from very poor backgrounds very very poor backgrounds and that is what i want us to talk about uh, in this next slide most of the girls i work with and the boys are from very vulnerable homes they are running away from early marriages they are running away from uh, female genital cutting they are running away from uh, teenage motherhood and they are running away from being housemates and house girls and house helps so what we do as as a school is to try and provide them an opportunity and an area where they can learn they can do things and for me just like mike said i don't believe that we start first with uh, the bloom's taxonomy i believe you start first with the maslow ensure that these kids feel safe ensure that they they think that the school is a good place to be in and then other things will come into into play so i started working with a number of organizations um caritas world vision samburu uh, world vision samburu samburu seed samburu asante africa foundation and we started making lemonades from the lemons the situation that didn't look very good this is the school that i was showing you that was a desert completely but it could produce its own cabbages it could produce some some uh, tomatoes we could take care of some chicken and we started producing uh, some eggs to other people which is a very important thing for me i think it helps everyone to understand that what we are doing is is uh, what the society needs they need to understand the knowledge that they are getting from the school is more important than what it is that we tell them I am guided by this policy that confidence doesn't come when you have all the answers, but it comes when you are ready to face all the questions. This is something that is guiding me every other time, and I think it's something that has uh, made me understand things. All of us face problems, but what are you doing about the problem? So that is where your leadership ability comes into. So I'll tell you, don't, don't, uh, don't blame, don't lament, just start small. This is an example of how my students complain that they don't have a basketball pitch. And you can see we started small. We decided we will have a court. We didn't have a roof over our heads, but we said it's not the roof that studies, and we started small. Students who are doing some work, the class, uh, they're doing, uh, we have optional subjects. Some students were outside, others were inside, but they still continued learning from outside. So education can take place at any place. As a leader, it's you to create the opportunity. So this is what I do most of the time. I try to inspire the next person next to me. I inspire teachers. Here I am talking to teachers. On this side, I'm talking to young young uh, students from different schools. Here I'm talking to the youth about issues of uh, female genital cutting. And here I'm talking to a group of teachers on using technology uh, in the 21st century. Now, because of the Global Teacher Prize, I've been able to attend a number of conferences and I've been asked to come and inspire a number of people because of the various work I do. So these are a collection of photos that talks about what I've been doing and the conferences that I've attended. Here on this first one, um, I was talking to uh, African uh, Conference of Principals. 
all the principals from various schools in Africa met together and we were talking about how you can start small and inspire each other. Uh, on this other one, I was working with a group of uh, uh, school leaders from uh, across Sub-Saharan Africa. Here, I was uh, leading a class session with Ugandan teachers. Uh, this is the Global Teacher Prize uh, with my, my colleague, Dr. Maina, and quite a number of photos that talks about some of the work that we do. Here, I was addressing teachers. And we have also been organizing conferences. You can see the same three faces. The three of us who are part of the team that was to organize a conference that was to take place this week in Kenya. Unfortunately, because of the COVID crisis, maybe we may go online with our next conference uh, with them. Now, because of the Global Teacher Prize, I've also been able to get other awards. One of the major awards that I got the other day was this outstanding performance on Glo Global uh, Learning Ambassador. I was picked as one of the best uh, school leaders in Africa and Middle East. The three of us were awarded this by the World Bank. Uh, they catered for us. We went and spoke to policymakers. We spoke to ministers of education from uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and Middle East. And we told, we told them some of the things that we think work, not the policies that they will talk about. Uh, I'm also a Microsoft education expert uh, where I use technology uh, to teach. Thank you very much. I've just given a very brief snip of who I am and what it is that I do. Wonderful, wonderful. Big round of applause. Thank you. Th thank you very much, Abdi. Thank you very much, Abdi. And uh, we are available for uh, working with you and sharing more. So now I'll go to my presentation. And uh, I hope it's going to work. So I hope you can see my screen. Not yet. Okay, let's see, share. Can you see it now? Yes, it's on. Okay, thank you so much. So thank you, Mike. Thank you, Abdi. So I'll pick up from there. Mike is a teacher. Abdi is a teacher school leader. I am a teacher educator. So you can see the blend of uh, the team here. And uh, my work is uh, working with teachers and uh, trying to make most of them to be what the Global Teachers does. So I am at the Aga Khan Academy. I'm the head of a professional development center. And the professional development center is an incubation whereby we take innovations. We invite teachers from local schools and we try to make them different. For example, Mike has come to our school to speak in a TED conference to teachers. So the idea is to bring out all those uh, innovative teachers and they share with other teachers so that uh, they can take up that particular idea. So that's my main work, to be a champion of transforming teachers across the broad. So when I got this recognition and I was mentioned top 50, it was quite a resounding effect to me because I work a lot with teachers and now they started appreciating, realizing, oh, this person is important. This person has been telling us to do one, two, three. This person is uh, somebody we need to listen to. I appeared on TV and there's a lot of information about what I do. So people understood more of what I did. And then I was invited to the Global Education Conference, which you just started with, which you showed, and we are able to witness that particular big day. That day is when I lost my voice because I was so proud of that recognition that even in Africa, we have teachers who can reach that time. Because uh, before this, Mike was closest. Mark was in the podium 2017. Abdi was there. Then me, in this, it was the first year we were two of us. And for your information, this year, my mentee is on top 50. Lina Anyango, a teacher who I've mentored, is in top 50. So you can see we are becoming ambassador. Abdi inspired me, I have inspired somebody. So we are becoming like the people who are channeling this information of how do we make teachers best. So I will just share with you what I have been doing for the last one year because of being an ambassador. I've been involved in curriculum design because of now they know what I do. I've been invited, like here I was in uh, University of Concordia with my colleague from China and we are trying to make a software for young children, which we can use in our countries, in China and Kenya. So that has given me profile. I was in South Africa trying to work with the teachers on how can you teach, uh, because at the academy, we teach pluralism and we teach ethics. But nobody knew that. So when I came into the limelight, 
I was invited to South Africa and how can you teach values in a class? So I was busy sharing with teachers from South Africa, how do you teach values? I've also been invited to Netherlands, whereby we were doing uh, enhancing the curriculum. How do, as you are teaching, how do you bring pluralism in your curriculum? So being a global teacher prize shone some spotlight on me. So I started getting invitation by different association or come here and help us. I was also in Italy, in Bologna, where I was working with teachers explain to them about science projects. How do you do science project whereby you are solving an issue in the community, but you're also teaching? So you can see that uh, it has amplified my presence beyond my country, beyond my school, to other country globally. The other thing is I am a champion of technology integration. So I've been invited, like here I was in Kibera working with teachers on that. I was also in remote areas in Masai Mara. Because now they know who I am, I've been invited in various stations to support learners. How can you use technology in remote area? Because I believe geography does not determine what you can do. It is the teacher's impetus to be able to do what they can. So I go to marginalized community. I go to both people who cannot be reached and I support them. How can you use technology with solar? How can you use technology when you don't have electricity? How can you use technology in your class? So that those are the things which I've been doing. I also facilitate with Abdi whereby we train teachers on how to embed core skills. If you are teaching any subject, how do you bring communication and collaboration? How do you bring creativity and uh, critical thinking? So we have been working with Abdi for the last six, seven years on how you cannot say, let's stop now. I'm teaching you critical thinking. No. How do you teach your mathematics, but you bring critical thinking on board? So for example, here we are teaching communication and collaboration. And if you look at this picture, we're using words. To, make, to find words. So ma minor is magnificent, and this guy is another name. So you come in. So we, we teach active-based learning with teachers because we want them to be like us. The other thing is professional learning. So I've been involved because this is my main mantra. This is what Dr. Dushon trained me to be. So I work with the educators. I work with policymaker to champion how do you transform a teacher? How do you expose a teacher to new practices so that they take up and then they transform. They don't just listen to pass for an exam, but they become somebody who's changed. So that is a seed Dr. Dushon and team planted on me, and I've been championed with that. Professor, I can tell you, I've been championing this, and thank you for the inspiration. And then uh, I also attend conferences because whatever I do reaches a small community. So I do research, I do papers, and then I go and present my find. Like here I was in Z Zanzibar presenting about technology, how do you teach digital literacy to schools? So I go to different countries. I was in South Africa here saying, how do you assess core skills? I was here in Canada. And this is one in Canada is very interesting. This girl you see here is my student. This is who I am to Dushon. And this student is doing PhD in Canada. So you can see that uh, the way Dushon pushed me, I pushed this girl and now she's in Canada doing uh, her PhD and we met in a conference. It was so exciting to see my students in a conference and speaking together, presenting a paper, and she was so amazed. So teachers, you can inspire your learners and they can continue making impact in life. Whatever you do, they can become the what you want them to do. So I do conference attend. I also work with policymakers. So I'm invited by Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development to help in the curriculum review because they are changing their curriculum to CBC. Down there, you can see I was with the Minister of Education I have met six ministers of education across the world because of my role. For the last year, I've met three. I've met the Ghanaian Minister of Education, I've met Zimbabwean Minister of Education, and I've met two Kenyan Minister of Education just because of my title. And you see, that is when I whisper, this is possible. This is how I do. So I also involve in policy. I also do policy engagement globally. So you can see I've been in Zimbabwe, Djibouti, Somali, Uganda, and here is where I tell my story. How do you do this in your country? How do you teach core skills? How do you assess pluralism? How do you teach ethics? How do you bring technology? So I've been, have been having an opportunity to move to all this country and tell my story, not literature, but share how I do things and what is possible. I've also networked with the universities across, with the Ministry of Education. I have invited, because of my title, I connected with JDO Foundation in the US, and through a phone call, 
they booked a flight and 12 of them came to see the schools we are working with. Now they are working with five of our schools, they have donated iPads and they are supporting them. So you can see as Mike said, we use our title to connect to others who come and continue supporting us uh, as we move on. And then um, I was awarded the Aga Khan University Presidential Award on Educational Leadership Excellence. The first and only one, and I got this from the president of Aga Khan University. I felt so good because when you are doing so much and then you receive such an appreciation, it gives you an impetus to continue doing more as yeah. you are serving the people. So, and then I've been also been connecting with my colleagues. So here you can see we connect, we share. I connect with Mike, Mike connects me with other people. I invite Mike to my school, I invite Abdi. Abdi and Mike have come to my school to talk to my teachers. I, I was training school leaders and Abdi through Skype, he talked to my teachers. So we have established a network whereby we draw from our experiences and we connect, we still stay connected. And we believe that together we can do much, much better. Even the guy there who is missing, he's having a commitment, but he wanted to be with us too. And then because of COVID, I've now become an online facilitator. Not for me only, but I'm supporting the teachers. I've been invited to support the whole country in terms of how do you teach online. So I've been facilitating sessions across, working with schools, working with the ministry, working with teachers on how can we reach the unreached based on technology, on TV. Just yesterday I was telling Abdi, I was uh, advising Ghana and they have sent me their first radio session and their first TV session, which I'm now reviewing and sending back. I'm in Kenya, but my title has brought in other people, so they are tapping into my expertise and we are growing together. So that is me, and uh, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. I'd now like to play a short video I've just been sent by Peter, because he said he's in a, in a car traveling, but I told him send something because uh, people want to hear you. So I want to play something from Peter just now. Uh, let me see. Can, yeah, just now I spoke to him and uh, <laughs> I told him I'm in this session, but he's traveling. Let us hear from him. Hi, I am Prada Peter Mukata Bichi. I'm the winner of the Global Teacher Prize 2019. And it's a great honor to win the Global Teacher Prize because it has uh, really transformed the community around me. Uh, it has changed the lives of my students and it has also uh, inspired, you know, uh, other teachers and even itinerary uh, people in the community. And uh, it has shown that uh, uh, teachers can achieve so much, they can change the world, they can transform the world if they are given the support, and even if the teachers themselves uh, really take uh, you know, their, 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 their job seriously. And therefore, uh, I want to use uh, uh, this platform to do my, my best as a teacher, and um, also to participate in transforming the world, promoting peace, uh, so that we can uh, really be able to achieve uh, the goals as, you know, as one family, because all of us, we are brothers and we are sisters. And besides this, you also have the Global Teacher Prize um, Ambassadors Community, and I... Okay, so... <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You Thank, you. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Thank and uh, we welcome questions now. <laughs> uh, and just Anthony, I know that I, th I think you will have very busy schedule, but how much time can you stay, stay with us so that we can coordinate everything? No, I have uh, changed the other meeting. I, I think this is also important, so we have some time. We have okay. some time, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Could, Mira, could you could you help us uh, with, with anyone who has got questions or comments, please? Feel free to ask because this is a good opportunity. I actually asked because I knew Anthony very well. I asked Anthony, can you come in to talk? Anthony, well, you came with us, the whole group of the, your <laughs> colleagues and it was such a great opportunity to meet everyone and to hear your fascinating and inspirational stories. 
Now let's hear from, from our students, from our guests, maybe questions, maybe comments. Sean, can I start with the question? Please, please, go ahead. Uh, thank you so much for your, uh, you know, inspiring speeches. And, and I'm, I'm just astonished how, you know, you know, you were able to navigate, you know, given the circumstances that you are working in and being able to inspire other people in your country and which is and all over the world and which is, which is such an honor and, and you know, um, a great, you know, chance to listen to. So I just wanted to ask, I'm sure, I mean, as educators, we all, uh, you know, I hope have, have our own, you know, you know, um, inspirers. So I wonder whether you had a, a person in your lives, you know, when you were a child, or maybe when you're adults, uh, who inspired you, uh, you know, to go and, and be a change maker in this world. So if you could share your personal experiences on that. Thank you. I think I will start and then others will join. For me, I've been inspired from my lower classes. For example, when I was in class three, I asked a question in a classroom and the teacher physically abused me and I was caned very much. And I wondered, I was just curious. And why was I caned? That triggered me and say, I want to become a teacher. So when I reported uh, in 1993, September 15th at 11 o'clock, I reported to the college where I was posted. And I found this old teacher using old notes. And I told him, I will not be like you. So I've been having signposts in my life whereby I've been seeing things being done differently and I believed in a different way of doing them. So I've been doing things between 1993 and 2003, 10 years. I was doing things whereby I was out of place. For example, in 2000, I was observed by a teacher and in school inspector, a national school inspector, who told me, you don't know how to teach. I don't know what you're doing. But I'm wondering, why are your students learning? All this came, to, all this came through when I went to Aga Khan University. That's when I realized whatever I have been doing was correct, but I did not have a theoretical background. So I've been, I've been out of place. I've been the sore thumb in education, doing things out of the way. But when I went to Aga Khan University, I now got the light. I say, oh, this is how things are done. And that has given me confidence. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mike, anything? Any, any person inspired you when, to become a teacher? I think, yeah, I always say, I, 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 nowadays I get a lot of inspiration from my own students. But... Uh, I grew up as a child who uh, a lot of my um, child life was taken off me because I had to work a lot. Uh, I started working when I was already 14. I was working in a garage. And um, well, every day was about proving myself because it was about how do you find a, a meal for that day and how do you convince people that you're still worth it because you're coming from a family that has no money. You have to now prove yourself and you have to support your own family. So I struggled a lot with proving myself and dance, I would say is my true inspiration because uh, the first day I got into the dance floor, I met a lady, she's called Miriam. And uh, she was uh, then the president of, uh, her husband was the president of the Refugee Council in Kenya, the UNHCR. And being a diplomat, she was not allowed to work, but she was allowed to work for free. So she, sorry, she approached the school I was in if she could teach. And you see, we started doing classical ballet when we were old. <laughs> and uh, it was very hard to get it into our bodies. But she kept on insisting that it's not about the body structure, it's not about the performance, but it's about you performing to your own self. So she gave me a lot of inspiration growing up. And uh, when we got into the UK to study, uh, I was able to now say, I don't want to take the professional route. I went to work with a dance school called the Dance United. Yeah, which was working with juvenile youths and because i was also considered a juvenile human being within my dance school because i was a rebel and so they 
posted me to work there. And it's there that I got the full calling of the importance of dance. And when I came back home, I was like, I want to use my dance as a tool of change and not as a tool of performance. And uh, up to today, we still uh, work together with my former teacher, Miriam. She comes to my school to teach when she's in Kenya. And um, I fully see it. So she was my true inspiration. But now, every day, I get fully inspired with the kids I work with because uh, they just, they are free. They are free souls. And uh, it triggers me to think hard. They challenge me a lot. And uh, because uh, they're also coming from schools where uh, they still punish people, <laughs> the way Dr. Gyoko was saying, <laughs> they still punish them in their schools. But when they come to my space, uh, they feel free and they are able to talk to me on critical issues. That's why I'm able now to get like young girls who are talking to me about menstruation. And so I have to challenge myself to go learn about menstruation. So I get inspired every day now from these children. Initially, it was my teacher who put me on this line, but now my students are like, every day I get new things to work on. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Uh, Abdul Kadir, may I ask you to respond to the question from Valentina? Let me say, because your school, how you started the school, was the, the situation was not very, like a very sophisticated, very difficult, but you really took leadership and changed it into, into a school where facilities improved. So Valentina is asking, what was the main challenge in your professional life? Was there any moment you wanted to just do, to drop everything and just to quit your work? Abdul Kadir, can you respond to this question if you, if it's okay? Yes, yes. Um, challenges are there. Um, in fact, what people see mainly, people see, people see the surface, mm -hmm. but they don't know the deep, yeah. the depth that you undergo the stresses you go through the lack of sleep the amount of effort you put in and all that mm -hmm. yeah. so for me i i only believe that quitting is not an option but there are situations that have uh, have made me want to quit i remember one time as, as a school teacher i was working in a school and i had a lot of challenges with my school principal who believed that what i was doing was was not the right thing because for me, me, I said, you first have to affect the students through their hearts, not their brains. Mm -hmm. So we had students who are coming from very poor backgrounds. And when I was on duty, there was a student who had uh, sneaked out of school. And uh, the policy says if a student sneaks out of school, the student is supposed to be suspended. Yeah. But me, I asked the student why he sneaked out of school. And he said he will not explain it in front of others. He need to explain it to me. And then he told me that he sneaked out because he, he had been sneaking out of school at about 6.30 in the evening every day and coming back to school by 7.30. Mm -hmm. Within one hour, he's back. So I wanted to know from him, why were you sneaking? And he told me, we don't have a parent. I usually sneak at 6.30 after I get my dinner so that I give it to my sister who waits across the fence. I wait for her to finish eating. Then I sneak back to school and look for food. Now, how do you suspend such a student? And my principal could not understand why I am, I am bending the rules and I'm looking at things from a different perspective. So we had a lot of issues. I got a number of letters telling me that uh, I should uh, explain show cause why disciplinary action should not be taken on me and all those things. Yeah. It made me feel very bad. But in the long run, I realized it was the right thing to do. And I think that is also part of the inspiring aspects of being a leader. Now I know. None of my teachers will ever face such a situation, and none of my students will face such a situation. They'll have the opportunity to be listened to. Thank you. Thank you very much, Abid Kadir. Uh, uh, Professor Lynn Parment, uh, she was a vice dean when I joined another Bayef University Graduate School of Education. Uh, she wrote a very nice message. If Lynn is here, we can ask her to say this in front of others. Otherwise, I, I can read her, her message. Are you Lynn here, or you left? <laughs> can you say if you left, Lynn? So, maybe. Okay, she's gone. Let, let me just read her message. She says that I am sorry, but I have to leave as I have another meeting. Thank you for, for three very inspiring talks. I admire your energy, your willingness to ask questions, think differently and create solutions. I am sure this will be great inspiration for our students here at Graduate School of Education. By the way, Dr. Mayana, I wrote 
the collaboration and communication materials as a consultant to British Council Connecting Classroom Core Skills Project. Oh, yeah. I would love to hear your feedback on this at some point, if this is all what you are referring to. Thank you all for everything we do, etc. And so maybe something to connect with Anthony. And now I would like to Igeri, I would like to ask Igerim, our doctoral student. She also was a graduate of master's program from Azerbaijan University. She has posted a question, but I request her to ask it in front of us. Igerim? Yes, Hello. 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 Uh, Hello. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Dishon Shamata, for organizing this event. Uh, thank you, dear speakers, for such an inspiring and interesting presentation. And uh, my name is Aigirin Kazigaliva. I am a PhD student currently at, uh, at Nazarbayev University Graduate School of Education. Uh, but I'm also a graduate of uh, this school. I uh, did my master's degree in multilingual education. Uh, so I would like to ask you a question. So uh, uh, the question is, uh, what is most important to you when you are teaching? Mm -hmm. How do you teach in practice? And what is most important to you when you are teaching? Excellent. And uh, uh, dear guests, maybe if you one of you could respond to this question, choose whoever responds, because I would like to also invite other students, and particularly I see alumni, and I request them also to ask questions. Thank you, Igerim. Uh, uh, Thank you. Mike Abdukadir, anyone to this question? They want to, you to describe what do you do in the classroom? Like how, how do you interact with your students? What, what exactly do you do? Okay, on my side, I, I say, I, I look at it from two perspectives. One, do you concentrate on teaching or do you concentrate on learning? For me, I concentrate on learning. When I go to class, I try to make my learning as interactive and engaging as, as I can. I try to give an opportunity for every student to speak and talk and share what they know. I believe that uh, when you are inside the classroom, you are the most inspiring person this student might have met that particular day. So if you are there to discourage and give them uh, uh, hard words because they are not understanding, then you might not get it through. So for me, I start from the perspective of first, this is a child and not a student first. Mm -hmm. Being a child, then I ask myself, then as a child or a human being, this child must have gone through a few other things that I don't know. Mm -hmm. So let me assume that when they answer me wrongly, when they answer me rudely, they might be reacting to other things and not the particular lesson I am in. So I start from that perspective. And then I try to give as much attention to the students as I can so that they can understand. And for me, when they make any little progress, for me, that's the best thing that can happen for the day. I think Thank for you. me, Thanks. when I go to class, I go there to learn with my student. So my teaching style is a bit different whereby I come with problems and we explore. Mm -hmm. Me and my student, mm -hmm. we explore and I see their different perspective. My inner feeling is to let the student make meaning by themselves, but also to connect to the real life. Because whatever I used to teach in class, I used to connect it to the life. For example, if we are talking about uh, our community, I'm, I was teaching digital uh, technology. So I'll be teaching about how do you create a poster. I tell them, go in the community. We take a school bus, we go around, we look at a problem, we come and we make. So I like connecting my teaching with the situation in the community. The last example I'll give is when I was teaching research for my diploma students. We normally take medicine to the slum, we deworm the children, but in the process, we learn how to collect the data, how to do observation, and how to write a report. So I like pegging my teaching to a real life problem so that it can remain with the learners. Excellent. Mike, I just imagine when you are teaching, you. I just recall the movie Shall We Dance. Is there <laughs> any element of Shall We Dance you use in your class? <laughs> yeah, so we, <laughs> with me because it's dance and uh, we always come very excited because it's that one day of the week that uh, there's freedom of doing whatever you want. So we explore a lot and um, uh, I always say, yeah, we just come to party. So it's um, every day is a birthday party or so, <laughs> because then it's fun for children. We do a lot of um, 
so we, we use that, but we also try and define solutions to certain problems within our own community. So we bring the community into the classroom and not just shield our classroom with our walls. And um, so what I try to do as much as I can, sometimes I'm forced to not focus on the content I had planned to do because we start off the class by what do you guys want and not what I want to teach you guys. And uh, they design things. Sometimes we end up with very beautiful choreographies because I don't do them. I don't create them. The children create them. I sit and watch them work. And, and, and that's a very powerful tool I use. I sit down. I have a very nice chair in my dance space. I sit down, I drink my coffee, and they are dancing, and they put all these things together. And at the end of the year, we have a very beautiful musical that when the media come and they ask, so how was it to build this choreography? I tell them, ask the children, because they build it themselves, uh, because it's their thing. And with that, then there's now a lot of ownership. We, when we were redesigning our space, we asked our parents to build, to help us work in the space. They came in and their parents who cannot give us money, so they say, I'm a painter. And now, come and show their clients what they've done because now it's a very beautiful, nicely painted area. So there's all. So what I do is just create the ownership of the classroom onto the children. And with that, give them a platform to learn anything uh, and to also think beyond the space and they now think of their wider community. Wonderful, wonderful. And now I would like to turn the question to one of the, our audience mem uh, participants of the, the, and I see our graduate from last year, Nurlani Mangaliyev. Nurlani Mangaliyev is the graduate of Nazarbayev University. Maybe can you briefly, Nurlan, I will request you two things. If you can briefly introduce yourself, and also Nurlan is one of our very good uh, alumni and he's doing some remarkable work. But Nurlan, can you tell us why Kazakhstani teachers are not participating in this award, or if they are participating, I may not know it. And secondly, can you tell us about your very interesting encounter or meeting with Anthony? What was the situation and the, what, what was your observation? Okay, uh, so briefly about me. Hello, everyone. Hello, Dr. Maina Vagelko. Yes. Nice to see you. Salam, <laughs> my Salam. Uh, East African refugees, uh, my friends. Uh, so, uh, my name is Nurlan. Um, uh, as Mr. Dushan said, I'm a graduate of uh, Nazarbayev University Graduate School of Education. Um, my primary work is in teacher professional development. So, actually, we do the same things uh, as um, Dr. Maina here. And um, we work with teachers in Kazakhstan. We support them professionally. We try to deliver them different courses, seminars, workshops and sometimes even just some motivational uh, talks uh, to, to keep them motivated. So this is basically what we do as a, as a center here um, in Kazakhstan. But um, recently we started to go outside the country. So we started to work with different teachers in different countries. Uh, we started with uh, the nearest neighbors like Russia or Uzbekistan or Kyrgyzstan. Uh, Azerbaijan and, and other countries from, from former Soviet Union, but uh, since most of our trainers, teacher trainers speak English, we decided to go even wider. And actually one of our first, um, I would say, customers or just our friends, our teacher friends who invited us for teacher professional development were uh, our friends from Kenya. Um, so that was the first country in East Africa we started with. And now we work with teachers from Kenya, from Tanzania, from uh, Malawi and Ethiopia and Nigeria. And I hope we will, we will expand our, our network of, of uh, partnerships as well. So what, what we do basically is we do the same what we do here in Kazakhstan. We deliver our courses, deliver different workshops to teachers anywhere in the world. And that's how I ended up in Mombasa, um, a wonderful city. Believe me, if you have a chance to visit this this place, please go there. And this is a message to all my Kazakhstani friends. Believe me, it's it's worth it. Uh, it's it's one once in a lifetime experience. So um, uh, I ended up in Mombasa last year. 
uh, that's where we met. I visited um, Agahan Academy, a uh, wonderful school, lots to learn from, from that school as well. And my, my offer still stands, so uh, we are waiting for you uh, here in Kazakhstan as well, but make sure it's summer when you come, because <laughs> <laughs> it's very cold in, in winter. Mm -hmm. um, we were I actually going to organize it. Just, just tell him that it's colder than Canada, so that he <laughs> Yeah, I did. I did. I did tell it actually. Yeah, because when I when I went there, it was the middle of January, it, uh, the beginning of January, when it was minus thirty five here in Astana, mm -hmm. and it was plus thirty five in Mombasa. So, <laughs> yeah, very big difference. Yeah. Um, as for your question, uh, Mr. Dushan, uh, about uh, the Global Teacher Press, uh, I actually I followed this. Um, event for a long time since I became a teacher more than 10 years ago and uh, I actually had the same questions why don't we participate and if you go to the website you look at the map you see that there are very I mean almost none yes uh, close to none the number but um, recently the teachers started getting interested in, in the global teacher prize and even some uh, NGOs have uh, become interested in organizing local events first uh, to to get the hype going about this comp uh, about this event. Um, and I, I, as far as I know, a couple of teachers are applying this year, and they are going to the finals. But I'm, I'm, I might be wrong about this. By the way, one of the uh, teachers who is applying, who 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 was selected uh, the best teacher in Kazakhstan. Uh, he was my teacher. He used to be my teacher, my math teacher. Okay. So I'm very proud of this as well. Um, so I, I hope, yes, I hope more and more teachers will be interested in this because I believe that uh, our teachers also have a lot to share. And by the way, uh, since we started working, it's it's now been three years since we started working with uh, our African colleagues from East Africa. Um, I can say that there is not much different among us. Um, the problems are similar. The struggles that we face are s similar. The system of education maybe uh, differs a little bit in some points, but in most points it's the same. Uh, same people, same problems. Uh, we had the same fun that we have here in Kazakhstan. Uh, and especially, uh, especially, um, People in Kenya and Tanzania, they're very warm and welcoming. Um, I even picked up some some Swahili while I was there, and I'm still <laughs> trying to learn it. But maybe next time I come to Kenya, I will, I will deliver a workshop in Swahili. Who knows? Thank, thank you for having me today. Thank you. Thank you. And maybe I will ask one last question, and I will ask each our, of our speakers uh, to say some concluding remarks. My question is really, maybe uh, either of you or three of you, can you tell us what is this competition about what is the criteria what do what do they look how do because i like what you said that it's it's about it's not about money of course the the winning one million dollar is good but you said how much recognition you have got how much you really were able you are able now to have a recognition and you are your voice is very powerful but how do we really go go to that any any criteria any of you can share briefly please I think I saw something. I don't know. Can you see my screen? I'm trying to share something I saw. Yes, yes, yes. Is this part? Yes. Is this person from your country? <laughs> yes, Kazakhstan. Yes, he is. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so very, very nice guy. Yeah. So, Doctor Dushan, I think uh, one of the things uh, the prize is about is appreciating that uh, when you are teaching, you're not just focusing on the content but you are also appreciating the context and uh, you are teaching transcend beyond the subject to include the well-being of the learner but also as you are teaching you are also a school yourself so that other teacher can learn from you what i have understood and when i look at the profile of the people who are recognized is that there is a broader mission of what you are doing beyond just teaching physics so when they look at, when they are interviewing me, they say, yeah, you teach physics, but how do you teach physics? So when I explain, oh, I go to the community and uh, we look at how we can purify water. Why do you go to the community? And uh, then uh, how are other teachers learning from you? So from my perspective, I think they look for somebody who is transformative in three ways. Transformating the learning experience, transformating the learner, and transformating the community. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything, uh, Abdul Kadir or please, Mike, anything you would like to add to this? Uh, right. if, if not, if not, I will ask each of you, please say some concluding words, because it, from our side, it was such an honor to have three distinguished guests, our brilliant teachers from Kenya, and, uh, and as Nurlan said, I hope that there will be more opportunities for us to travel back and forth to visit each other. Yeah. We, we, that we should be able to interact more in the future, hopefully. But in the meantime, I, from my side, I, I thank very much uh, for, for, for coming, volunteering and taking your time because I know everyone is so busy. You have so many other commitments, but you made this possible to, to come to talk to our students. And I think each of us can learn from our, our each other's experience. And now if, if uh, I don't know, if any of us, I don't know, Wilmira, if any of the participants say some, I don't know, some comments to thank the participants or yourself, and then we will ask the participants. Maybe, how do we go about it? Wilmira, Wilmira why, do, why don't you conclude and we will ask yeah. each participant to say something? Yeah, once again, thank you so much, everyone, for, you know, uh, coming and joining uh, this wonderful session. And thank you especially for our guest speakers. We've learned a lot today about your country about your experiences and hopefully we will have you know uh, many teachers from kazakhstan joining this wonderful you know uh, uh, competition hopefully in future and hopefully you will be able to visit kazakhstan in summertime <laughs> and and we will be able to see you uh, in person so all the best to you with whatever you are doing now and i know how hard it is at the moment to you know facilitate learning when you are so far away from your students i mean so anyway Good luck to all of us and all the best from Kazakhstan. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mike, can you say the last words so that we go around the same way? <laughs> yeah, I will, I, uh, I'm very grateful for your university for giving me this invite. <laughs> I'm again speaking in a university. <laughs> so uh, I'm very grateful for this. What I would really love to add you guys is just uh, keeping our heads high. I always say like teachers, is the most uh, unrespected profession ever i've noticed and i know that and uh it, it is us to bring back the dignity that teachers lost and that the profession lost and uh the dignity comes by now getting our activism voice hard and um, we play a big part in transforming our world and if you look at now the situations that are happening globally for instance with um, racism that is happening in america yeah. And it is us with the solution to these problems. It is us who can lay the foundation to have a way better community for the future. And uh, we can unteach what people are taught. So we can teach them new ways of understanding each other. We can teach empathy. We can teach kindness. And uh, we are soldiers of change. And so I would really love to encourage you guys yeah, in one way or the other. If you end up in a classroom, please do and do it all heartedly because it's a calling and uh, the world needs us. Thank you. Thank you, thank very, you much. very much. Thank you, thank you. Abdi? Abdi Kadir. Thank you very much. Uh, my, my concluding remarks is that uh, there are three things involved in uh, teaching and education sector. I'll say this severally. Mm -hmm. The first is passion. The second is passion, and the third is passion. Wonderful. Just say it in different ways. <laughs> Just be passionate about what you will do, and I'm sure things will work out. Even as a school leader, take passion with you. You should not love your station. You should love your job. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. you are, if I was to start my life again, I will be a teacher. I believe that uh, teachers have a pivotal position in this world because whatever we are doing, we are making our future better. When I go to class, I don't see learners. I see a doctor, I see an engineer, I see a policeman. I see my future in all my classes. So whenever you go to class, remember it is your future that you are making. When I grow up, I want to be a teacher. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anthony, and thank you, everyone. Just in order, in, in honor of our distinguished guests from Kenya, and this, 
Swahili is a national language, I would, I would think there. Yes. I would like also to impress like Nurwan with a few words to say goodbye in, in, his, in Swahili, which is a Kwaheri, Tuana Tena. And by the way, many of our students know very well the word Akuna Matata, which is also actually yeah. actually yeah. a really word. Yeah. Well, with this I will say Jambo, yeah. Jambo Wana, yeah. Abari Gane, yes. Uzuri Sana. Yes. <laughs> Asante Sana. Asante Sana. Asante sana. <laughs> Asante sana. <laughs> well, I would like to say thank you and goodbye to our dear guests. And our students, we will also stop here. And at 3 o'clock, please join back, because we are going to talk now. We are for, for moving from internet teacher status internationally, we are moving to the teacher status in Kazakhstan. In the meantime, dear Anthony and Mike and Abdikadir, if you need any favor, any kind of a uh, collaboration from our side, please don't hesitate. I think we need to continue our collaboration like this. Thank you and goodbye for everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.